Hello again. In the next section, I'm going to continue talking about global trends and challenges that are facing the medical device sector. Okay, so I spoke previously about the aging population and, and what that means at the moment uh, in terms of medical devices. And I drew a very crude uh, picture of a, of a pyramid shape and, and that flattening out. So here it is in a more uh, easily understandable XY format. So uh, between the years of 1950 and, uh, and 2010, there was a slight increase in the percentage of people over the age of 65. Now, that has increased significantly uh, since then, and it's estimated that uh, between 2010 and 2050, uh, there will be a doubling in the percentage of people that are over the age of 65. So this is going to have a huge impact on the types of medical devices that uh, patients will be looking for. So we'll be looking towards more in vitro diagnostic uh, medical devices. And, and, and these would perhaps be linked in with our smartphones and connected to other devices. Uh, the challenge is that there will be smaller profit margins associated with these. Some of these will be dependent on government subsidized schemes. Um, and then there's the challenge itself to, to get these devices um, connected to um, to ICT or information technology and uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So the next trend is the uh, growth of the emerging markets and uh, again we spoke about this previously about the significant growth in um, medical device manufacturing in, in countries such as China, India and Brazil. Um, now we also said that that was due to um, kind of low margin commodity goods and um, and that, that will shift over time and our brand confidence will shift. So uh, we will be uh, more likely to get confidence uh, in the, the products coming from these markets and, uh, and bit by bit they will be producing higher end niche products. And uh, so that is a challenge facing um, industry um, in, in Ireland where I am based at the moment is how to differentiate and how to keep on innovating. Uh, another challenge is, is that in general, the medical device industry operates, operates at a lower risk than its uh, pharmaceutical or biotechnology counterpart. Uh, the reason being that um, there's shorter product development times for medical devices, so it's approximately 33 to 50% uh, less product development time than a drug development time. Uh, there's less regulatory approval risk uh, associated with medical devices. Now, the trend is towards convergence of medical devices and drugs. Uh, this is an example of one such product. This would be a bandage that has incorporated a slow releasing drug or a hormone uh, through the patient's skin. So it's positive in terms of the improved combined product that's available to the patient. Another example would be a drug losing stent. Uh, which stops restenosis or, or re-blocking of the artery again after it's been pushed open by the stent. Um, another example would be in glucose monitoring systems. So a, an insulin pump might be attached to, it, to a patient and the pump is able to monitor the glucose and tell the pump how much insulin to give in a continuous loop. So it, this would be a huge benefit to a diabetic sufferer. Uh, the trend, uh, the, the challenge, I suppose, to the manufacturer um, is, the, is the regulatory risk. So by incorporating a drug, you've got larger clinical trials, uh, more patients, more expense, and longer time to run trials. There's a longer patient review and approval time after. Um, but more and more, the trend is in medical devices to utilize new technologies and materials being developed from stem cells and nanotechnology. And these might replace conventional materials used in orthopedic and cardiovascular devices. Um, and because of this, and it was already happening already, there are stricter regulations uh, coming into place all of the time. There are several new regulations impacting the medical device market at the moment. Uh, some of these are the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act um, and the Unique Device Identification Legislation, which um, requires medical device manufacturers to um, have one of these UDIs or unique device identification uh, for their medical devices. 
uh, and this is having an impact on the industry. These are just some of the few uh, stricter regulations. Uh, there's more and I'm going to talk about them in detail in a later section of the course. But for now, uh, what you need to know is that there are stricter regulations and new regulations impacting the market at the moment. It's impacting the cost of manufacturing and it's impacting how the medical device uh, manufacturer goes about their business. Um, can they subcontract certain tasks? Uh, can small companies cope with these new regulations? That type of thing. So it, it's a big area right now. Another trend is the consolidation of industry. So SMEs are small medium enterprises and they serve a large number of niche product lines in the industry. They're a vital source of innovation and entrepreneurship and they devote large proportions of their revenue to R&D expenditure. Um, so they are mainly involved in R&D. They're trying to develop new products, niche products. Um, they have a wide range of products and these range from low margin commodity goods to high margin niche products. However, it's difficult for these small medium enterprises to gain a foothold in the large multinational uh, culture that we have. Um, as I said, they, they are mainly um, doing R&D, they're not manufacturing, they're not producing, so they are reliant on a, on a multinational possibly to take an interest in their product um, and to, 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 to buy them and take control of the manufacturing of that product. But they are a vital source of innovation in the industry. And there's also growth in outsourcing. Um, so this can be um, relocating uh, manufacturing bases to low cost locations. Uh, this mainly affects low margin products, especially those products that are not used internally in the body. Um, due to quality concerns, however, and regulatory issues, medical devices um, or medical technologies, the industry has been slow to relinquish control over the production of whole products to contract manufacturers. Now, this is changing and, and more and more contract manufacturers are beginning to uh, manufacture um, part products or whole products which may be assembled uh, with the company themselves or assembled elsewhere. So it is moving towards more of a contract manufacturing uh, industry. Uh, consumerization is a big buzzword at the moment in the medical device industry. Um, this is due to the emergence of smartphones and social media. Um, what consumerization is, it's the, the the patient, I suppose, in simpler terms, becoming the consumer rather than a health practitioner or a surgeon being the consumer. Uh, so the, the patient inevitably will be able to diagnose their own disease, keep an eye on, on diagnostic information on, on and as, as diabetic patients already do on maybe their blood glucose read, readings, um, but also be able to uh, deliver medication. Um, so where this has started to be realized is there's apps that can, um, a live core app is, is an ECG app where you can uh, look at your ECG. Um, and and the, the big area of this is indeed diabetes, as I said, so for patients will be able to connect their glucose uh, readings to, to their phone, which is going to tell an insulin pump how much insulin to give. Um, the, the challenge here is to increase investment in developing patient empowering technologies and um, to increase investment in um, merging medical devices with ICT, the information technology sector, um, and also to look at the design of medical devices and are they going to be compatible with this sort of technology that is now available to us. So it might need a rethinking of the design of medical devices uh, that we have currently available to us, especially diagnostic equipment. Uh, another emerging trend, and, and I suppose it, it follows from that in some ways, um, is that customers are becoming more value orientated. Um, the established medical device products are becoming more crowded, so high impact innovation in these products are becoming harder to identify. So these are the established medical devices, uh, stents, wound care, drug delivery, uh, that side of things. Small Companies are gaining market share by offering low prices and innovative business models. Um, and because of that, customers are learning to expect a competitively priced cost, uh, product that is good enough. 
So the value oriented customer, although concerned about price, also has standards for quality, efficacy, safety and service. Um, and the challenge here is to build a sustainable business that can achieve all of these things using cost reduction business models, uh, which might be limiting the service support, etc. Um, that is available. And as I said, if, if the, if the um, if consumerization of products happens, maybe service support may not be so critical. So there, there will be a, a shift in medical device technologies. So I'll, I'll zip through some other emerging t emerging trends and challenges. Uh, safety and quality, I suppose we've already uh, talked about, as being a, a significant area that is changing, it, it's getting stricter. Uh, R&D expenditure is needed for high levels of innovation and for new generation products to happen. Uh, and, and that is a challenge for companies to reinvest uh, back into R&D. And then environment related, uh, again, due to stricter guidelines um, and rightly so, there's, there's waste management issues company have to, companies have to contend with which add significant cost. So in the last few slides, I'm going to quickly zip through the differences between the medical device and pharmaceutical sectors. And, and the, the reason I'm doing this is because I've talked about convergence of the industry. Um, so it is important to look at the background for both uh, and to see how the convergence of medical devices with pharmaceutical is going to impact the sector. So the medical device industry um, is relatively young and it's very diverse. So large numbers of companies are involved um, in the medical device companies and there are a large number of small and medium sized companies and a few larger multinationals as well. Um, pharmaceutical on the other hand has a long historical background and is comprised mainly of multinationals. There's not too many SMEs and small companies in this sector. The products in medical devices are generally based on mechanical electrical and materials engineering. They're designed to perform certain functions of quality, safety and performance, and they generally act by physical means. OK, on the other hand, pharmaceutical products are based on pharmacology and chemistry, um, and they now encompass biotechnology and genetic engineering. But the product development is, is by trial and selection. So there's a large amount of time devoted to selecting drugs. Um, and these drugs are biologically active. Um, how medical devices innovate is continuous innovation and iterative improvements. So it's based on new science, technology and available materials. And this is quite a quick iterative um, step. So a medical device might come on the market and, and two to five years later, it, it's, it's next generation product. Um, is, is on the market um, because there has been a breakthrough in new science or it's just a little small iterative improvement. It's a little bit slower in pharmaceutical, there is continuous innovation, um, but the pharmaceutical products enjoy um, an extensive product life cycle and long investment recovery period. So typically pharmaceutical products um, we will go on the market and enjoy a long time on the shelf before its next generation comes along. In medical devices, it's a very short product life cycle, as I said, two to five years, and the investment recovery period is very short. So there is a big need for continuous innovation. Uh, medical devices have a high distribution and training education costs and requirement to provide services and maintenance. The customer is often uh, the surgeon. Um, and they are very, uh, they might be technically demanding products to, to use. Um, so, so stents being a very good example of that. Um, so the medical device manufacturer would have to send training personnel um, to, to, to do on-site training with these. And, and obviously it, it's not a once-off job and you're trained and off you go. Um, it's often integral to clinical procedures, the use of this medical device. So user training and education are essential and this adds costs. Uh, pharmaceuticals have low distribution costs. In most cases, there's no service or maintenance, and there's a little training required than for high-tech devices. Okay, uh, so where pharmaceutical um, may 
uh, do do well on the long product um, recovery time and, and sorry capital investment recovery time. Um, they uh, suffer with longer clin clinical trials, uh, as I talked about. Um, randomized controlled trials are the gold standard. Uh, so what these are, patients are divided into group. There is a placebo group and a drug group. The, the groups are blinded, so patients don't know which, which they're getting, drug or placebo. And these are considered the gold standard. So what you can find out very quickly from these trials is whether the drug works or it doesn't work. And the efficacy and efficiency is easy to demonstrate. And it can be largely demonstrated prior to market. So although these trials are, are typically longer and there's a long patient follow-up time, uh, the, the efficacy and efficiency is demonstrated prior to market. With medical devices, on the other hand, um, randomized control trials are not always scientifically informative or possible. Uh, it's very difficult for a surgeon to pretend he's implanted something or she's implanting something. Um, so the patient generally knows what device they're getting. It can't be blinded. So the efficacy and efficiency can only be truly demonstrated through actual use and uptake in the market. Um, so um, you're looking at, at, at getting the product onto the market and then demonstrating efficiency and efficacy. And also there is many other factors at play besides the device itself so it may depend on the skill and experience of the physician the quality of the hospital and other factors so it might be more difficult to ascertain okay so with that i'm going to wrap it up um the the, the main point of that is there is a shift happening in the global medical device industry at the moment uh, it's moving towards uh, the medical device and pharmaceutical sectors converging there, there's uh, challenges associated with that the sector is going to become more patient driven as consumerization and value orientated customers come to the fore uh, smes will be still trying to gain a foothold and, and reinvest in, in r d and innovation um, and, th and there's lots of exciting developments in the medical device sector at the moment with the convergence not only with the pharmaceutical sector but also with the ict sector as well Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.